So as you're finishing up the warm up, um, I'll just talk about some things. Um, so first off, uh, that you yesterday you should have gotten this single sided note sheet um, that is. Uh, That is the note sheet that goes along with the video that we would like you to watch. Um, both note sheet, if you lose it between now and <coughs> if you watch this video, both the note sheet and the video are on Canvas for you. Um, it can be, needs to be done for class tomorrow. Uh, then, uh, looking ahead next week, Thursday is your exponential logs and logistics test. Okay. Um, also looking back at the at the board. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Um, and so we're ready to go with all of that. So, Mr. Lindsmeyer's accountant is figuring a depreciation rate of 5% per year on the farm tractor that tills my bean fields. If the tractor is worth $192,000 new, what is its value on paper 14 years later? Okay. Well, we can make ourselves a... Uh, we'll call it T of... Value of the tractor is equal to A times B to the X power. Okay. What is A? 192,000. What is B? 0 0.95 because 5% in terms of the decimal is 0 0.05. Since it's depreciating, that means it's going down to subtract from one. I agree with that. And what is X? 14, because we want the 14. I get that the tractor is worth $93,633, and we will call it 60 cents. Agree? So today we are going to talk which for most of you, is probably a brand new function. Has anybody ever heard of the logistic function? Okay. So it's a brand new style of function. Okay. So a logistic function has some similar properties to a exponential function, but not everything can be um, modeled with an exponential function. Okay? For instance, population of a city. Okay? Yes, it starts out exponentially and it grows, but there are certain factors that come into play with that as the population is growing and growing and growing. Can we think of something that like the population of a city, what what some factors might be that would prevent it from continuing to grow exponentially forever and ever and ever. Space, okay. resources, okay. Oh, you know, so that's going to prevent exponential growth from continuing forever and ever and ever. Okay. So, it's not bounded on the top, that exponential growth. 
So that's why we can't always do that. In many situations, there's a limit to the growth. For instance, a plant or a tree will only grow so tall. Okay? Even the redwoods, the mighty redwoods in the redwood forest of California only grow so tall. Now, granted, that tallness of those redwoods is a heck of a lot bigger than these trees that you're looking at outside the window. Okay? But that still has a limit to the growth. Population of a growing city, we just talked about that. Sales of a new product. Pretty soon, the new product. Everybody's going to have it. If it continues to grow exponentially, pretty soon everybody would have it. Okay, and then that would immediately stop the sale. Okay. So in these situations, the growth begins in that exponential manner, but eventually it'll slow and it'll level up. And that's what a logistic function is. A logistic function starts out at with exponential growth. Okay, so it starts out low, it comes through, it grows exponentially, but then there comes a point in time where it slows and it levels up. That is what a, a logistic function looks like. Now with a logistic function, just like with an exponential function, we have a horizontal asymptote on the bottom, which normally is y equals 0. But one extra feature of the logistic function is now you have a horizontal asymptote at the top. So your function has what is called a limit to growth. And that later on we'll find is the line y equals c. And we'll, I'll explain how to find C here momentarily. Okay. So that is what your logistic function looks like. Now, this would obviously, obviously be logistic growth. Okay. A logistic decay would start up at the upper limit and then it would decline down to the lower limit. Here are the two different kinds of logistic growth functions. We're going to focus in primarily on logistic growth functions in this little daily lesson that we're talking about today. So f of x equals y equals c divided by 1 plus AB to the x power, or C divided by 1 plus AE to the negative KX power. Okay. Where that C value is your limit to growth. So that means then that your upper horizontal asymptote would be y equals c. So whatever that numerator is, that is your upper bound. That's as big as your function can go. So in this first one, if B is bigger than 1, then that would be the decay. 
on the left one. On the right one, if k is less than zero, making this exponent be positive, then it's an exponential decay. Or it's an exponential logistic decay. All right, so what? we need to find a logistic function, and we can find it, and we'll go through doing this. We need to find a logistic function with the following condition. First, we have an initial value of 12, which means we go through the point 0, 12. That's our initial value. Second, we have a limit to growth of 60. Third, we pass through the point 1, 24. So based off of those three, we want to make ourselves a y equals c over 1 plus a, b to the x power logistic function. And I think. Do I know any of those values, A, B, or C? What's C? 60. Okay. So for sure we're at Y equals 60 divided by 1 plus something. We know that we go through the point 0, 12. x equals 0 is very helpful for us. If I plug that back into my basic function, my original like parent function, we could say 12 equals, now I can say 60 there, divided by 1 plus a, correct? Because b to the 0 power is 1 times a is a. Okay. How would I go about solving that equation for a since it's my only variable left? Go ahead, Morgan. So this is x and this is y. So 0 would go in here for my x and 12 would go in there for my y. Mm -hmm. And that's where the b to the 0 power is 1 comes from. Okay. Go ahead, my dear. Oh, um. oh I would do it. I would start from multiplying by everything by 1 plus a. So we would get here then 12 times 1 plus a equals 60, correct? Okay, then what? Do we have to distribute? What can we do instead? Let's just divide by 12. That gives me 1 plus a equals 5. Subtract 1, that gives me a is 4. Totally fine. Totally fine. Just a couple extra steps. Because you'd have 12a plus 12 equals, or to me, you'd have 12 plus 12a equals 60. 
So then you would subtract 12 from both sides and get 12a equals 48, divide by 12 a. So now we know that this is plus 4 times something to the x power. Okay. Now what can we do? In, that, in my function that I'm almost done building, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to say here, I'm going to say 24 equals 60 divided by 1 plus 4. Oops, I got to use the same color. I can use first and color. 4 times b to the first power, correct? That one should be. Okay. How would we go about solving this one? Okay, and then what? And what do you got? No, you go. She's talked already. By 1 plus 4b? Okay, so then that's going to give me now 24 times 1 plus 4b is equal to 60. Then, what? Divide both sides by 24. This one's not as pretty, but still doable. 1 plus 4b equals 5 halves. Six b divided by 12 is 5. 24 divided by 12. Now what? Subtract 1. But when I subtract 1, I'm really subtracting 2 seconds. So that's going to be 4b equals 3 halves. Dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. So that's going to give me b is 3 eighths. So our logistic function for this exact scenario looks like that. Questions, comments, concerns, clarification. You try this one. Use the ABC.
So I got my limit to growth is 30. So we for sure can start out like that. Five is going to equal 30 over 1 plus a times b to the 0 power. So that's going to be just a there. So then we get 5 times 1 plus a equals 30. 1 plus a equals 6, so a is 5. Then it also passes through the point 15. So we get that. Multiply both sides by 1 plus 5b cubed. Divide both sides by 15. Subtract 1. Divide by 5, and take the cube root of both sides. Ideally, you don't round that. Ideally, you just leave it like that. We will tell you if we wanted you to round at any point in time. But ideally, you don't round because then when you utilize these logistic functions to figure out how tall a tree is after X amount of years, then you're exact. Okay? You start rounding there. And if you round to a different one than somebody else rounds to, your answer is going to be off by a little bit. Okay? Questions, comments, concerns, clarification? Now, we also might have to graph these, okay? which we can do. Because okay? we know that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. We also know that there is a upper horizontal asymptote at y equals c, which in this case would be y equals 8. So all of my function has to fit in between there. Okay? Let's find the y-intercept. How would I go about finding this one? The zero and graphs, probably. Okay. So if I find f of zero, that would be eight over one plus three plus twenty-seven to the zero power. Well, what's twenty-seven to the zero power? That's three. Which is 
like go through this, right? Zero, comma, two. Yeah, buddy. That's all you need. Because it's not always going to go through a nice and neat point like we tried one. Then we have we put one in there, right? That's Three times 0.7 is 2.1 plus one is 3.1 and what's 8 divided by 3.1? 2.1 2 one more time. Not always going to be nice and pretty. Sometimes, yes, you can find a pretty point, okay? but most of the time it's not going to be very pretty. Okay? Wrap that. If it's because otherwise it's a logistic case. Okay. Yeah. If if k is positive, if if this if this exponent here is positive, it is a logistic decay. Okay. It's kind of an inverse thing. Okay. So this down here needs to be an exponential decay in order for it to be a logistic growth. If this okay. down here is an exponential growth, then it's logistic decay. Oh, I mean, yes, yes, it could. If there was something afterwards, like in a in the in an exponential function, you know, if there's something that comes here after the fraction, yes, that would then shift the entire function. He is talking about the Euler number, the exponential number. Two point seven one eight two eight. Thank 
Agree on both of those. Yes? Okay. Agree that it looks like this. Yeah? Because it's a logistic growth, because my exponent here is negative. Okay? What? Is this y intercept? Six and two thirds? Twenty thirds? Okay. And on these for sure, Court, you're not going to get any pretty points because E is not a pretty number. Yeah. yeah. It's useful. Not good. Good time. I love it. They explain so much. Like your body's, uh, the medicine that you take into your body and how that gets absorbed into your cells. It's got lots and lots and lots of good stuff. Okay. That, ladies and gentlemen, I believe is all that I have for you today. Mrs. Hill didn't get to the last example because we're at that awkward, like, we have enough time, but we might not have enough time, so we just said, no, done.